my channel. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Melanie and I'll be a seventh year second grade teacher in a major city in Pennsylvania. And today, I got my new planner in the mail and I'm so excited to unbox this with you. I actually haven't looked through it yet and I'm super excited to go through it with you and see how it compares to my planner from last year. So I'll do a little breakdown of my planner from last year and this year and I want you to tell me below, what do you like in a planner? What do you look for in a planner? So without further ado, let's get on to it. So this is my last teacher planner from last year. This is from Aldi. Guess how much this was? Nope, you're wrong. This was $8.99 and it is literally the best planner that I've ever had. We'll see what this new one has to offer, but so far, this one is number one and I've had quite a few different types of planners in my day. On the inside over here, you'll see that there's a dry erase place for you to take notes. On the other side of this is your contact information in case it gets lost, but I already filled mine out, so I'm not gonna show you that part. On this page, we have the calendar at a glance for the 2020-2021 school year. Mind you, it only has from July to June, so this is a school year calendar. And you're gonna notice in the daily notes section coming up, it also only has Monday to Friday. So if you're looking for a planner, you can also use like in your personal life for the weekends and things, this is not for you, but that's also not why I use this. I use my phone for personal things, so this is great for school. On the other side of this is a contact information sheet. So I put like my team teacher's contact information on there, their Google voice number, their regular cell phone number, um, and their emails. So I won't show you that because I already filled it out. On these pages, we have our holidays and special dates. I really like seeing the holidays in advance. It does help me um, with the school year, even if maybe our school is not off, it helps me understand if other schools are off because sometimes being in a charter school, we don't always follow the same off dates as public schools. So if a public school is off, you might notice your charter school siblings might not be in school that day, but at least this tells me why. After this page, there is a similar page that looks like this. It has July through June, but these are blank for you to fill in your own important dates. So I use that to fill in birthdays, my student birthdays and some staff birthdays and other dates that I know that we would be off from school. So I'm not gonna show you that because it does have student names. This planner comes with four sheets of these checklists. There's one on the other side and there's some on this side. Again, I did fill out some student names, um, so I cannot show you that part, but I like using these to track special incentives that I've given out or jobs so that I know I don't give um, the same student an incentive or job twice. I use it to check um, if those students, certain students gave me permission slips so I can see who's missing permission slips, also important papers. Um, forms that need to be filled out. I like to use these checklists a lot. I didn't get to use it as much because we were at home, unfortunately, for most of my planner. So you do see some blank spaces, but I did get to use it as much as I could. On this page, they have a table that you can put seating charts. There's two different tables, and which worked out for me because I had two different cohorts but I just use this to list my students in alphabetical order by first name because my other list was, I believe, alphabetical order from last name. So that's what I use this for since I didn't have a seating chart this year because we were online, but I also can use them for groups as well. On this side, I just kind of graphed um, out how I want my new classroom to look. So I did take some pictures that I took in my new classroom. And I tried to use this information that I took to try to sketch out what I want my new classroom to look, where I want things. This is not completely drawn to scale, but this is just the blueprint. And then we go into our notes pages. And I typically use up a lot of my notes pages. So I'm so glad that this planner came with plenty of them. I just didn't need a lot of notes for the beginning of July. <laughs> After each of um, or before each month calendar starts, there's 
um, a few months or the month before and the month after at a glance. We have a to-do list, your top five, your important dates, and a quote of the month. So my quote for July was, know your worth, then add text. Mm, I love that quote. Don't know where I heard it from. Social media probably, but I love it. And as you see, I have my um, some to-do list, but I didn't have much to do in July, <laughs> to be honest. So that's why this is empty. But I wanted to show you what this looks like so that when I do go into the other months, we can skip this page in case I filled out some things that are a little sensitive. And then we have our month. So I'm not gonna get into the specific of my dates, but I like how with um, the months, you do have Sunday to Saturday. And I like these lines that you can fill out um, as the days go by. It gives you a little more structure. Make sure I'm not just writing nonsense. And I like how they have like, when it's gonna be a new moon, a full moon, a half moon, all that. I don't know, I just, I like that. Cause we know when the kids are gonna be a little more cuckoo, right? When that full moon is out. So I think that was cute. There's a note section on the side. And then the way that most of this planner is set up is we have Monday through Friday and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight periods across. You can label the periods up here if you wanted to. So maybe you have guided reading, math, writing, science, specials, whatever, what have you, or by different cohorts. I use this by organizing my lessons and objectives. I did not get too deep with lessons. If anything, I may have noted if I needed special material that I needed to print out, bring from home, get in advance. But other than that, it was like GR, CVC words. <laughs> you know, like something simple to remind me because I did have to type a full lesson plan to my assistant principal anyway. So I didn't need to get too specific in my binder or in my planner. And then at the end of the month, there are two note sections. And as you see, it was just the beginning of the year, so I wrote down some weekly ideas because that was one of the curriculums that I taught. And then it starts a new month. I love how all of the months are divided by tabs, so it can be easy to get to, and they're marked on both sides. There's also this cute little bookmark that it came from, uh, that it came with and it has sticky notes on it. These didn't stick that well, but it really didn't matter to me. Some of them fell off, but I like um, being able to see what week I was on without having to like turn a whole bunch of pages. So that was a neat little thing and it has a little ruler on the side. Then we have our communications tab. And in our communications tab, they have um, a section where you can write your student name, maybe if they uh, walk, bus, ride, whatever. You have, what is this? The guardian's name, that email address, and like two phone numbers, and then some notes. And I really love this because it saves paper and time for me creating a form like this myself when it's right in the back of my planner. I am so, so upset that I didn't get to use this this year because we were virtual, so none of this even mattered. Even though I do have a sticky note with one important student, but. Oh my goodness, how amazing is this? Every planner needs to have this right there, all your student information. Then we have a communication log, and I really like this too. Again, it, uh, it eliminates me having to do extra steps in creating this myself or having a binder or a folder near my phone because it is all in one place in my planner. I can write the time, the student name, the reason why I had to call home, maybe it was positive, maybe it was a behavior. I can fill it in myself or use a little cheat sheet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How I communicated with that parent and what happened. Maybe the parent didn't answer. Maybe this is what I told them. This was the um, result of our conversation. And I like having that all there. And with the communication logs comes these communication receipts. Now I did not have to use these this year. Again, we were online, but they are perforated right in the middle here. So I could tear them off Oof, right in the middle. So once I fill this out for why I'm calling home, or I had to communicate, I can send this to um, send this home with the parent and record that receipt number on to the log that I had. So then it double ensures that yes, we did have this conversation already. 
I have it in my log. I sent the receipt home. Everything is in place and I love this idea. I love it because it also holds the students accountable as well. On the back of those communication receipts, you can also add some additional notes or comments or parents can add additional notes and comments after they sign and return. Over here, we have substitute teacher information. And again, I love this. What? You don't have to create these forms yourself. It is right here. The teacher, oh, I'm sorry, the substitute teacher, they don't have to have your whole lesson plan book. They don't have to have your computer. Like they can leave, um, you can leave this for them, these forms for them, and they can fill it out to tell you who were maybe the high flyers, who were the superstars, um, what subject did you teach and what happened for things um, when things happened that were either amazing or really disappointing. They can add some additional notes and it's perforated and it can leave it right on your desk. You can instruct them to leave it right on your desk before they leave. And depending on how many days you're gone is how many of these you can keep or you can leave for them because there are so many. There are so many and there are so many on of the communication log as well. And on the back of the substitute teacher information thingies is, like I said, the students who um, really sit out, whether that was a good thing, smiley face or bad thing. And we can also rate certain subjects or events that happen right here. So I really love it. It's one sheet back and forth, a half the paper, doesn't take up a whole log. Love it. This is my favorite part that I'm so upset that I didn't get to use. But honestly, because it's perforated over here too, I might just tear this out. And if my new planner doesn't have it, I, I might just use it for that. After the substitute teacher information is this website uh, login form. And I already have some on here and passwords and things. So I'm gonna cover that up. I even labeled it with one of the important stickers because I've referenced this a lot. The different websites we use for online learning, my username, passwords. You can even, I use this personally for my information to keep track of it, but there are enough slots that you can probably list all of your students for one website and their username and password if you want to do that. If I was in person, I probably would use that for um, Zern when we use Zern, which went with our math curriculum because those passwords were always kind of random. <laughs> so I could use it for that, but I did like for as many websites as we use for virtual teaching this year to record it here so I didn't have to think too hard about memorizing all of the random passwords that I had to memorize. Then we have two pages, there's one on the other side, of field trip information, which actually did come in handy even though I was virtually teaching because, you know, it was hard for the students to stay engaged and having those trips, letting them earn those trips were um, a fun way to keep them engaged and to keep school fun for them. So you can, you know, list the place, the website, phone number of whoever you need to contact, the address, how much it is. Um, because I work for a Title I school, that price should always be zero. The date, um, what time you're going to departure, what time you're going to return, and any other notes. I did, and I'm in a major city in Pennsylvania, and I ended up doing a field trip with the San Diego Zoo virtually, and it was phenomenal. I emailed them. There was a certain code that I had to use because I was a Title I school in order for us to have that virtual trip for free. It was awesome. I highly, 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 highly recommend checking out San Diego Zoo. Even if we're not virtual, I'm still, I still think they'd be able to do that virtual trip with you. They were inside of their like little golf cart going around to see all the animals. They talked about the animals with you. I loved it. My kids loved it. They were so engaged. But this helps keep all that trip information um, all in one place. Keep you so you don't have to write it on a piece of paper thinking about where it is turning back. You know all your trips are gonna be in this section of your planner and it is very good to have. I love that. And our last section has like 10 pages of notes. I had to skip through all these pages because I use the back pages for notes the most, like especially in meetings when it's more general things and not specific for that month. So I use a lot of these note pages, which I absolutely love. Having the little notes on the side where the calendar is, is okay, but I like to use this to take my notes in meetings and things so I don't have to have a planner and a notebook. Being able to carry one thing around and having a one stop and shop for most of the things I need for my class management, I, can, I guess you can call it, was awesome. And then in the back, we have this pocket folder, two sides. Um, it, you can't fit a whole sheet of paper in there like smoothly, so I usually um, have them 
fold it, which is okay. I kept my schedule in there. I kept my grading rubrics in here. Um, things that I would usually have posted up on my wall by my computer while I'm doing it. But because I'm not in my school, I wasn't inside the school. I just had it um, somewhere I can reference it easy. So right here, keep it all organized. Same on the other side. And then I also just kept my little schedule here, our virtual schedule. And what I could also, this is also a dry erase note section that I could have used. And then it's the back. Mm, awareness, autism awareness. Pembroke is the brand that made this. They also had a student planner. They had a baby shower planner. They have a wedding planner that I also have. But this by far, for $8.99, the best teacher planner I have ever had. And we're going to see if my new planner can fill its shoes. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so here is my new planner that I got from Amazon. It has that same hard laminated cover and back cover like my last planner did. If we look how it compares, they are the exact same in size and probably width, honestly. This also has a cute little ruler um, divider thingy. I guess I can scooch it up to show, to use it more as a bookmark. I can move it up a little bit, but it's also a ruler. So that's cute. All right. I am opening this for the first time, guys. I am, I am reviewing this with, this is an unboxing, so to speak. All right. So the inside has the 2021 to 2023 calendars at a glance. So it is dry erase, but, or it does feel dry erase, but I, don't, I can't actually take notes here like the other one, which is fine. I didn't use that anyway. We have a section here where I can write my information, name, school, classroom, address, phone, and email. A little progress each day adds to a big, adds to big results. Oh, a little progress each day adds up to big results. I can read. And this is a deluxe teacher planner, 2021 to 2022. Guys, I'm a little excited. I'm sorry. Why did this, anyone else? Thumbs up if opening new planners excites you as well. Like I am excited. I can already see that each of the months are divided by these tabs and they're two-sided. And there are also other tabs here, such as students, communication, overview plan, daily schedule, seating grid, and checklist. All right. So right after we fill out the information who the, uh, who the planner belongs to, we have contact, sorry guys, marking periods, class resources, and websites. So our contact is our principal, our vice principal, the secretary or, you know, administrative assistant and librarian. Our marking periods. So far, I only see, oh, we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, we don't have that many marking periods. <laughs> when it begins, when it ends, that's really important because sometimes the end of the marking period like literally sneaks up on me. So I like that I get to record this, that's really smart. Um, when our report cards do, that's also very smart and other little notes that you might have. Classroom resources and websites. So I guess this is like in my other planner, where you can list your passwords or website's passwords and username if you want to. It's just not in table form, but I'm sure I can draw lines and make it into a table if I really felt the need to. Emergency procedures. Oh, this is gonna be good, especially because I'm going to a new school and you know how scary it is your first um, drill, whether it's a lockdown, whether it's a fire drill and you're at a new school and you don't quite know where you're going and you're kind of just following the kids because they've done this before. Yeah, yeah, we're there. Students with special schedules or health instructions. Oh, I really like this because I had students to leave for speech when it wasn't my class. So when I came back um, to teach my class and I noticed students were missing and the other students didn't know the teacher that they went with, I'm like, okay. But it may have been speech, it may have been OT, it may have been um, ELL. So I like that I can record that in my binder instead of leaving, you know, little notes, <laughs> sticky notes all over my desk. Special duties, oh, so this might be class jobs or like for you. So maybe if you have lunch duty one day, maybe you have bus duty, what day it is, what time it is, and other comments, maybe who, who does it with you or who's free that day to do it if you have to get a replacement. Okay. 
that makes sense. <laughs> student list. So we can name our students. Let's see how many spaces we have here. I'm just gonna use this key to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, two, three, eighteen, fourteen, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, six. And then I also notice if you look really closely that it's like a solid line and then like a little dotted line there. So I guess if your class is actually cut in half, you can do first and last name on two different lines. But I have too many kids for that unless there's another page. No, so I'd have to name every kid on each line. We have, what's this say? Contact, parent, guardian information, notes. Oh, we have two sides, so it's the same on each side, perfect. So I would definitely, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that's enough. I would definitely write first and last name on one side, like on an each thick block. You have two sides for that. And then you can name the parent on one line and the best way to contact them on the next line. I love that, love that. Now we have our communications tab. And I guess this is your log when you're calling home and everything. So we have the date, um, the name and some details. I might put student name and I put, might put mom. <laughs> I don't always have put like the full name or I might put the parent's name and put dad, uncle, whoever I'm talking to, just so I know who I'm talking to. Write the details of that conversation. And there's one, two, three, four pages like that. So that should hold you over for the year. I would really only record negative calls home. I do try to make to break up my negative calls home with a positive call. I had a coworker who she'd make positive calls every Wednesday. She picked a day to do it. So I don't necessarily need to write those down to save space. Then we have our overview plan. Okay, so here's some months from August to July. And I guess I can write like the big things that should happen in each of those months. All right, I like that. With little months at a glance at the bottom. Next we have our daily schedule. Oh, I like that. And it has the semester so I can break it up to quarter one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, however you wanna do it. I like that. Good. I don't have to post that on my wall, it's right there. And then if I did want to post it, I could just photocopy this. If I needed to give this to a sub or whoever, I could just photocopy that. Seating chart. Now my seating chart might not have to look like this. I'd rather draw out my seating chart, like what table, what desk everyone's in, because this doesn't really, but this helps if you're in multiple classes, I suppose, and you wanted to just list out who's in every class and read that out to take role or whatever for each class. Because that's what I did do um, when I did teach two different cohorts for our English program, but I don't think I necessarily would need this for this year. But who knows? Ah, then you have one, two, three, four grid sheets. This is what I'm talking about. So that you could just draw out your how your tables are set up and write each student's name. And if it changes and you don't feel like erasing that, you have another one. Or if you have another block, you can write that, you can draw that out too. And again, photocopy this, stick it in your sub plans. So you don't have to like draw it out or do something fancy on the computer. It does not have to be fancy. It does not have to be time consuming, unless you want that. That's on you. Some people love it pretty. Now we have our checklist. It goes down to 35 students. I already told you how I like to use my checklist to record um, when kids turn in for important forms to see for me to easily see who still needs it. I use this sometimes to check homework. And a lot of times with second grade, we're just checking for completion and checking for notes. Um, if parents wrote notes, if students are struggling, so I'll, I'll just write the week or whatever. Maybe I check it at the end of the week. Maybe I check it every day and just put a check if they have it. And A, if they don't have it. I, if they just did one problem, you know, incomplete. If they did one problem but didn't try for any of the rest. And there's one, oops, one, two, three, four, wow, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 checklist logs. Like you should be good for the year. Like you should be good for the year. Love it. And then we're getting into our months. We have this little dot grid here. I don't know if you can see that. Little dots. Sure, okay. Maybe this is like a notes page. Maybe you wanna draw out something. I don't know what I'd use this for yet. 
that quote say? With the new day comes new strength and new thoughts. Eleanor Roosevelt, love it. Looks like you can have some notes here, maybe your top to do's and then your checklist, more to do's or however you wanna do this. Maybe you wanna just list meetings that are coming up that month. Maybe you wanna list special hol uh, holidays, days off, staff meetings, birthdays that's coming up and down here is your to-do list. We have a Sunday to Saturday blank calendar with a quote up here what does this one say look for something positive in every day even if it's some days or even if some days you have to look a little harder mm, isn't that the truth sometimes you really have to look but you have a note section on the bottom and the month before and the month after this can be dangerous and confusing so make sure you know months before and after maybe you want to highlight special days coming up And then we have the breakdown. So this is organized a little differently. So we still have the week and I, I always opt to get the dated calendars because a lot of times they'll um, list in the big form, the big calendar form when there are holidays and stuff so that I, I know because I don't always have time to look back at the August holiday list to know <laughs> which days are coming up, which off days are coming up. So I opt to get them dated, but there is a version of this that is undated. And you can write your class and your periods over here and just write your list of maybe objectives or materials that you need for each class straight down. So where my other binder I wrote side to side, this one goes straight down, which I like as well because if I have it folded over like this, I can still see my whole day and I don't have to flip it over or have it out like this. So that's good. I like that. And it goes on for those weeks. Doo, 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 doo. And then we have note sections in the back, two pages of notes. And then it starts a new month. Nice. And each month's color theme is the same as the tab. So let me go through the month. So this is why I was talking about how it has Veterans Day, Thanksgiving. It already lists those holidays in the calendar. And that's why I like this instead of me having to fill in the dates myself because I often make mistakes. Maybe I wrote, um, I missed a day when I was labeling them and so now it throws my whole month off. And personally what I like to do is on Paycheck Week, um, Paycheck Fridays, I like to put a little green dollar sign right next, to, right in the corner of the date so that I also know when we're getting paid for that month. You gotta know, we have to pay our bills on here, am I right? All right, so now, oh, we have December. February. Now let's look at what's in the back. We have July and so whereas my last one had a lot of notes after the last month, a lot of note pages, this one just has three. So it has one extra one and then we get into our stickers and I forgot to tell you the back of my old one also had stickers but i ripped them all out <laughs> i ripped all my pages of stickers out for my next um planner in case i did not have cute stickers in my next planner i like to save stickers from planner to planner so this one has stars it has um don't forget it has no school important and these are cute they're like matte i like brighter colors though um, especially when it's like no school. I like them a little bigger than like a little no school. Nope, I want my no school to be like this big. But these are blank, so maybe I'll fill them in. Last day of school, first day of school. My last um, planner, this one had, I wish I knew where I even put those stickers, but this one had like um, also design stickers of like pencils, school buses, field trips, like for field trips, and it looked really cute. This one is very neat. Which is okay, because I saved the last stickers, so I can use both. We have staff meetings, gold stars, keep up the great work, so motivation for you. Oh, and then we have a clear pocket here. A clear, a clear pocket with some, what are these for? It looks like the, oops, look, something came off, oh no. Return it. I'm literally kidding. I'm not gonna return it. That doesn't matter that much. But these look like um, you can also put them in the dates in the big calendar, just in case you want those lines. That's what it looks like. In case you wanted to fill in your own stickers, like I said, maybe I'll use the green ones um, to indicate that we get paid that week. 
do whatever you want. Let's see. So we have ones that look like this. Three of those. Then we have these. And I think um, some people were saying they use this for when I read the reviews. They use this to indicate the subject. So maybe blue is math. Maybe um, green is reading. Orange is science. Let me look. I'm curious, what color is blue to you when you think of subjects? I think math. Do you think math? Am I crazy? Leave a comment down below. But so maybe as you're organizing and your lesson planning, you can leave a sticky tab right there so you know what subject it's for um, in case you can't see the subject tab. So that's cool, there's a lot of those. Stickers are always a bonus. And then either you can keep these in here or use this little pocket for something else because it looks like it can hold full sheets of paper. So maybe your schedule can go in there. And then we have a little pocket here. This doesn't look like it can hold a full sheet of paper, but I don't know, it's open at the end, so it might. And it's double-sided. And then you have a repeat of the calendar 2021 to 2022 at the back, just like the front. And that is that. I really like this. It doesn't have all of the, you know, special perforated pages like the back of this one where it had the um, substitute log, where it had the field trip log. It's not quite as detailed as this one, but it is really, really, really close. This keeps popping out too, so I wonder if that's gonna be a problem. But I really do like this. If, if I can't get my Audi one, I'll get this one. I believe it was $30, 32 because I think I got it dated, even though usually the undated ones are cheaper or are more expensive, but wasn't $8.99, but it's so cute. It matches my iPad case, it matches my phone case. It's really cute. I might use my Cricut to write my name on it. I might not, depends on what I feel. But those are my two planners from last year and this year. Oh my goodness. I hope you enjoyed that video. As you can tell, I am super excited about this new planner. There are some things I wish it had, but honestly, I'm just gonna rip it out of this book, put it in that clear pocket in the back, and boom, there's my ideal planner. But again, tell me, what do you like in the planner? What are things that you look for? Leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. My dog will squeak a toy for every like that you give. She's super excited. And click that notification bell so that you are notified when my next video comes out. And I hope to see you there. Bye!